if we had any questions. Um, I just had one to give people a bit more thinking time. Um, it was probably more of a question to me around is, is sequestration in a crop system going to yield accuse every year? Um, I don't know whether Harry, you, we're not really at that stage yet where we've got people that have been um, going through, but we do expect to see people to, to yield. Remember, as we've looked at uh, our crediting process in prior ACUs, that you do develop a high watermark and you do have to exceed that high watermark as you're building your soil carbon to be credited again. Um, you're always going to get those productivity gains that Harry and Rod and Matt have talked about here as well. Carbon credits are the cherry on top here. The Lorico team are here to help you improve your productivity and that's going to be your major gain. Will you get ACUs every year? You might, but you, it's not a guarantee. So that was just sort of a, a thinking question from me. Craig, you popped in a question here. Um, how often do you have to measure and what is the cost per hectare? So that one's a good one. Um, we do a carbon ready report, which tells you the cost of your baseline sampling if you're after the costs of a carbon project. So I'd encourage you to have a go at doing a, a carbon ready report with AgriProve um, and then maybe having a chat with Harry and the team about the, the costs of agronomic advice and those kind of things, if, if that's what you're after as well. Um, the second bit from you, if you want to produce ACUs, yes, so um, the 2021 soil carbon method requires you signing up for a 25 year project. So that's the idea is that you are locking the carbon in the soil for a period of 25 years. And over those 25 years, you keep up your implementation activities to ensure that that carbon stays, stays sequestered in, in the soils. Um, it's not like forestry or something like that, where you take your crop out, you plant trees on, you can't crop it anymore. This is the beauty of the soil carbon method. You can keep grazing, you can keep cropping, um, your double income basically then. You have your soil carbon income and you have your crop or your livestock yield as well. Um, I can't see any more Q&As, um, but Folks, if you've got anything, pop them in the chat. We can come back to them. You've got our details. If you re-watch this later on or you share it with um, a family member and they've got questions, do reach out to us. Um, I'll move on to my Toby, key points, I think. Yeah, Toby, go, just, there, there is a couple more that have that have come up on mine. Uh, okay. So uh, one was that uh, are Biomax products readily available in regional oh, yeah. South Australia? So the answer to that is yes. Um, so, and then the other one, of course, is using the soil methodology, how many ACUs and dollar value do you expect to be issued once factors and regulatory discounts are applied? So I'll let you speak to that, Toby, given the variances and differences that we've got. Um, so, so for dollar values of ACUs, how many ACUs and dollar value do you expect to be issued once factors and regulatory? Okay, so... Live ACU prices are available at accus.com.au. I think the current price is around $36 per ACU, um, but have a look at that to make sure you get current prices. Um, discounts, so there is a permanence discount of 25% that is applied to the carbon soil that you sequester, and AgriProof has a 25% success fee um, on the ACUs that you yield as well. Any emissions that you generate in your cropping or grazing system are also reduced from the sequestration. So it's the net amount of carbon that you sequester minus a permanence discount minus any success fees. Um, there were a couple of earlier ones. We've got a few rolling in now as well, Matthew. Um, yep. One from Pete Ramsey. I don't know if you can see that one. Yep. Do you have people applying Suncorp van in pasture? Yep, so sure crop van in pasture. So in a lot of cases with that where there's um, pasture renovation going, they can apply that to the seed. And I'll let Rod talk to those that have also looked to actually apply VAM into a pasture situation as well. I have uh, commonly done um, in, uh, in all those uh, re-establishments and, and rejuvenation of pastures so um, and summer cropping and, and whatnot. So uh, commonplace in, in, uh, in pastoral systems. Very good. Thanks, Rod. Um, I've got a question for me from Charles around AgriProof. Hundreds of soil carbon projects registered. How many have passed the first audit without achieving creditable increases in soil carbon versus those that have? So 
the, the point here is, Charles, that we wouldn't put you through an audit and accrediting process unless you had a measured increase. So we're out there doing our soil sampling and our monitoring, um, and we wouldn't put you through that. Uh, we go out and we have our lead indicators. We will test. Um, most people are generating accues in their second or third year. Um, whether it's a lot or a little depends on your dedication to your implementation activities. Like I said, we're seeing a variance in those measured increases sort of from one ACU per hectare right up to 15 ACUs per hectare. It's very much a, a variable outcome, just like seasons and soil types and, and those kind of things. Um, I answered Steve's, um, Patel. Yep, we've covered that one. I'll go back to the chat to see if we've got anything else in the chat. So just the other part there to Craig's is how often do you have to measure and what's the cost per hectare is um, yeah. so obviously under the 2021 method, Craig, there's a requirement to go back within five years from the baseline. Um, but one of the beauties of the partnership that we have with AgriProve, which Toby just referred to, is that we use satellite technology to do the lead indicators. And so we, it, we do that annually. And if it looks like the lead indicator is strong enough for us to warrant to go in with another sample, we then go in and that's what's enabled us to be able to measure these carbon increases in sort of 12 to 18 months rather than waiting a full five years to go back through and do it. So it depends on what we get back from the lead indicator and that's been very reliable. So if we get a lead indicator that says carbon hasn't really been built, um, it's and where we have them that say it has, in most cases where we've gone back in, we've had a, um, had an extreme noticeable difference in that. I think the, the key point to note there is that all a landholder or the operator of a carbon project pays for is that first round, that baseline soil yep. sampling round. For the remaining 25 years of the project, AgriProve bears all of that cost. So you're never paying for a subsequent soil sampling round. You just pay the, the first round and then um, that's what our success fee covers going forward. So um, once and once and done, which is which is a benefit. Um, very good. All right, Matthew, you did a pretty good good wrap up on the key points here. I'll, I'll move through this fairly quickly, but look, I think we can all see that there is potential for, for soils and pastures, those side-by-side -side comparisons, the impact of the management methodologies that Harry outlined, terrific. Um, I think it, there's a great opportunity there with some agronomic, aligned agronomic advice um, and, you know, Laurie Coe are, are there to help. Um, it is a learning process though, and I really do like that analogy. There were lots of great analogies in, in your stuff that you guys presented today. Start simple, do that crawl, walk, run. Your changes don't have to be radical. You know, we don't have to radically change our whole farming system. You're still going to be able to produce um, great yields. Um, you're not going to see major changes. Have a chat with your neighbours as well, or people around you. Have a chat with the team at Lorico to see what's working and what will work in yours. So do your learning um, and adapt. I think I think Rodney sort of talked a little bit about this, is that you are doing some changes, but there are different products that will have different things. Um, also, the, the Rubik's Cube analogy that Harry gave us around, we're only doing one side. A question we get a lot is around, hang on, Tobe, I'm not sure I can satisfy the requirements around eligible activities. So hopefully this gave you a little bit more ammunition or a bit more confidence around, oh, I can change. There are ways to change. There are modifications that I can Im implement now around those eligible activities. So you can adapt your management to uh, maximise your, your outcomes there. Um, also, just to, you know, do your numbers. I think the numbers speak for themselves, but always do your numbers yourself to make sure you're putting yourself in, in the prime position to move forward. 